In their first action after Pupin's death in 1935, Columbia University trustees named the new Physics Laboratories building in his honor. It was here, starting in 1939, that Enrico Fermi and others developed science for the Manhattan Project. Pupin's accomplishments and social graces enabled him to be a frequent prominent guest at many functions of principal, professional, and academic societies. Michael Pupin's fame was so well established by 1906 that he was included in this. Pupin may have stood in a line like this in 1874, waiting to meet a strange examiner who had the power to determine his fate, to accept or reject him with no appeal. Professor Hemholtz was the formulator of the principle of conservation of energy, a master in experimental physics and optics. He invented the ophthalmoscope, which revolutionized eye examination. Pupin, on the far right with students, returned to Columbia in 1889, accepting the post of teacher of mathematical physics in the new Department of Electrical Engineering. With Francis Crocker on the far right, they comprised the entire faculty of the department. The telephone had arrived. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876, when he was less than 30 years old. To gain credibility for his new invention, Bell held many lectures, such as this one in Salem in 1877. He demonstrated his telephone, making a connection to Boston, 14 miles away. Reporters at each end took notes to compare later and verify that a conversation had indeed taken place. By 1900, one and a half million telephones were in service. The old central switchboard was the key to an urban telephone network. Modern X-ray focuses radiation down through the hand onto the film cassette. The cassette has a white fluorescent screen on each side of the X-ray film. Pupin's invention, the fluorescent screens produce secondary radiation to expose the film. Pupin's friend, Thomas Edison, provided the fluorescent screens used in Pupin's original X-ray experiments. Using Pupin's invention, this became the first surgical case in America under the guidance of an X-ray picture. It's through the mathematical solution of artificially loaded lines. His analysis of alternating current waveforms through the use of adjustable induction coils led to the discovery of electrical tuning, fundamental to modern radio. Pupin's understanding of the electrical forces generated by the movement of electrons allowed him to challenge the theory of the creation of the universe out of that mysterious substance called ether. Citing theory and experimentation from Faraday to Einstein and Michelson, he concluded that ether was not necessary for the transmission of radiation and light, even in interstellar space. Experimental results made Pupin a strong advocate of the electromagnetic. Pupin's analyses of alternating currents was simplified by his invention of the electrically tuned circuit. His patent was Pupin's entry into the new art of the wireless. While circuit tuning is fundamental to modern radio, the earlier wireless telegraphy was just in its infancy. Marconi began demonstrating his wireless invention in 1896. By 1901, he succeeded in spanning the Atlantic. The first commercial use of the Marconi wireless was for ship-to-shore communications. Its acceptance for emergencies and navigation was immediate. As the number of ships and shore stations increased, tuning to separate frequencies became a necessity. Marconi bought Pupin's wireless patents. Soon the wireless became standard equipment on most larger ships. Wireless telegraphy soon progressed to radio. Pupin's invention allowed a radio set to select individual broadcast frequencies. The concept of tuning multiplied the capacity of the radio art. With this equipment, an early broadcaster could be on the air. Stations were soon serving multiple requirements. Pupin not only was responsible for the work on these electronic tuners that were so important to radio, he also uh, worked on a wireless receiver. Uh, this receiver was developed and was an important early prototype of the receivers that were put into operation. Uh, in fact, he was uh, given a commendation by President Harding for uh, developing these so that there could be wireless communication between uh, pilots in planes to avoid crashes. One of the, uh, the contributions of Pupin. 
Out of the crowd leaps a young man with a pistol. Several shots in the royal couple are both dead. The Archduke and his Duchess. The 18-year-old Serb nationalist Gavrilo Princip was the assassin. The Austrian response to the assassination was war with Serbia. Serbia's allies came to her defense, and the First World War had begun. Pupin. The Paris Peace Conference of 1919 was held in the palace at Versailles. Delegations from all victorious allied countries participated to settle many issues, including new national borders. President Wilson led the American delegation, shown here with other allied leaders. Pupin, attending as an honorary participant, had Wilson's respect and was able to present data that materially extended the proposed borders of the new nation of South Slavs, later Yugoslavia. President Wilson's support of the Yugoslavia made possible uh, many engineering developments. Uh, in Colombia, we have uh, several big portraits of Pupin. Uh, exhibit in different rooms but we think that I think this one probably Pupin wrote a book quite different from his autobiography called the new reformation in it he tries to reconcile science spirituality and religion his philosophy proposes that science has in fact brought about a sort of broadening and deepening of spiritual life in a way that he characterizes as the new reformation Romance of the Machine, published in 1930, was the third and last of Pupin's popular books. Pupin was interviewed regularly by the national press. These interviews often showed his philosophical side, interrelating scientific progress to moral responsibilities. Advancing age earned Pupin the position of elder statesman, receiving honors and dispensing wisdom. He was asked to review the year in science and perhaps to make some judgments. His philosophical ideas got elaborate coverage and were classified with titles such as Cosmic Harmony. And each honor and reception is covered in every detail. Michael Pupin's last interviews were printed simultaneously with his obituary. His disagreement with Oliver Lodge concerned the existence of interstellar ether. Pupin's last thoughts were of science being the useful tool of mankind, but not its master. The centerpiece of Columbia University. Hello, this is Holly Haswell, curator of Columbiana. Our special collection here at the university entails many things, including photographs, newspaper clippings, and ephemera. Our files on Michael Pupin are very, very extensive. We have the ephemera files in this collection and his actual personal papers are in the rare book and manuscript library in another building. Increasing paralysis forced Pupin to remain seated when greeting Albert Einstein. Michael Pupin was a founder of the Woodrow Wilson Foundation in 1922. Dr. Michael Edvorsky Pupin, died on Tuesday, March 12, 1935, in New York City. News of his death was carried by the press throughout the world. Soil from Idvor was brought to his grave in candles lit. And that the history of Pupin, the history of Columbia, has become as one with the history of Michael Pupin. I would like to end by quoting the words of Bancroft Girardi when honoring Dr. Pupin with the John Fritz Medal. Dr. Pupin, I salute you. An inventor who has made important contributions to the application of electromagnetism to the uses of man. A scientist who has added important facts to our knowledge of science and contributed to scientific idealism. An educator who not only has an enviable record as to those who have studied under him, but who has advanced the cause of education. A citizen who has contributed much to his country an American who is proud of the country of his adoption and of whom his country is proud.